everyone, my name is DeckerLink, the trained unprofessional, and sorry for all those whose first video this is, how how much of an uh, interesting first impression this might be. Uh, I'm not going to show you the full extent, but if you can't tell, uh, I've got a pretty bad infection on my thumb. I'm very tired, I'm in a lot of pain, but um, I have no videos left to uh, put out, I have literally no buffer, I've waited for too long to record, and so I'm going to try to use this as a way to distract myself from the immense pain that I am in. This isn't the only thing that's wrong with me right now. My thumb is incredibly infected, it's hurting the entire rest of my hand, and I fucked up my ankle, my whole right leg, pretty much, really bad, uh, trying to help Aaron move in his stuff yesterday. So, uh, this is to try to alleviate uh, the tension, and I'm wearing a bathrobe, I, I couldn't get a shirt on over this thing, so, um, I'm sorry if, again, if this is your first impression. It isn't always like this, trust me. It's a Spongebob tie, by the way. Spongebob square tie. I'm a fan. I'm sorry. Dusk, I've been thinking. You've mentioned a visit to the people. That this may help my public relations. Of course, Velasquez. Your public image is very important. Especially if you wish to dispel rumors. Yes. But I've thought of something else. Oh? And what is that, my king? A visit to the people might be wrong. If I parade over them with my lavish outfit, rife with luxury, they would feel hurt. This would be like a pompous display of ownership. In that way, I don't intend. In the way I don't intend. Would you like, to, would you like me to prepare a new outfit? I could allocate funds from the treasury. Something more rustic, perhaps? Not, maybe not fully intact, with holes. That look seems to be all the rage. No, Dusk. I must not disguise myself. Hiding who I am also gives off a bad image. I'm afraid I don't follow. What else could you be planning, my king? It may be risky, but I want to open the doors of my castle. I want the people to come to me. They will be able to walk these halls as if they were in their own home. This will give off the image I intend. That Terra truly belongs to its people. And that I don't hold back from them. Really? I would advise against that. We may be subject to massive theft. Not to mention your enemies may use this opening to plan an attack. Trust me, I've considered all avenues. Let me describe my plan in more detail. Of course, my lord. I did not mean to be crass. When everyone has arrived, I will have them gather in the atrium. At this point, I will address all of them at once. I apologize if the reading is a little choppy uh, <laughs> in this episode. I'm trying to uh, get into the thing, and so every once in a while, it, it, it's a throbbing pain, and I'm waiting for some ice, and I got some Neosporin on it, so I'm gonna be fine. Hopefully, but uh, I gotta fucking <clears throat> I gotta get into it before it can really be a distraction. All it is until this point is a is a nuisance. <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm trying. I will be fully forthcoming. This is where they will learn what I have planned for myself and the future for Terra. At this point, we will open our grand hall. We will have a feast for the ages. A ball that will be etched in time. And I will close by the by ending my reign. Oh, <laughs> you can't be serious, Velasquez. It needs to be done, Dusk. If my enemies still wish to attack me after hearing everything I have to say, then I will accept my appointed fate. While the repercussions of my death will be negligible compared to what comes next. And this twisted monarchy will end, succeeded by what the people decide. However, if my plan comes to fruition, I will leave to them a beautiful world in much better shape than it is right now. The mumblings of this new terror, perhaps they are not as far off as they think. We can only hope that. 
Alaskis groans in pain, grasping at his chest. My lord, are you okay? He removes his hands from his chest, stained with blood. I... Yes, I'm fine. Sir, you're bleeding! Please do not be alarmed. An old wound must have reopened. I'm capable of tending to it myself. You are dismissed. Yes, of course. Please call on me if you need any aid. If it gets worse, we must take action. Moments later, Velasquez leans against a wall. He grips the scepter in his hands, panting heavily. Has it stopped working? Oh, no. I can only imagine what in the fuck that means. It doesn't take long for me to pick up Shock's trail. After following it closely, it leads backstage. Not all the lights are on, it's somewhat dark. I'm still able to make out everything important. By the time I reach Shock, my eyes have adjusted. I see him standing there, his face in his paws. An extra large can of Pop Star rests beside him. It looks chilled about half full. Beads of condensation drip down its side. Why did you follow me? I guess he doesn't want to beat around the bush. I think for a moment before I answer him. I don't know how he's feeling, because I want to make sure that... Well, it's, I needed to see that you're okay, and I, I needed to see that you're okay. It doesn't really sound like you're really being inviting to his fucking tr troubles. I wanted to know how you're feeling. I want to listen to him. He's happy but confused. Okay, apparently that was the right answer. He looks at me confusingly, like he does, didn't expect me to ask about his feelings. I'm... I don't know, honestly. You know what's going on around here. Oh, shit! <laughs> it's my alarm clock! It's got windy days on it. Y you might have recognized that if you heard it. If I kept this... I probably kept it in. That was windy days about to play on the... Ow, my thumb! Ow, it hurts so bad! <laughs> and Cleese and Rocker were my best friends. When you tour with people, you grow so close to them. You become inseparable. You become more than just friends. When you perform on stage, it's almost like you're one entity. Seamless and perfect. To have it taken away? I've lost a part of me I'll never get back. I can't perform like that again, because I won't have them by my side. He turns to the side and starts chugging the pop star. The half full, the half full can quickly becomes empty. No replacement will ever fill that void. So what can I do? If I can never perform like I want to, that's what I've been struggling with. And I've finally decided. I'm going to resign. Quit the business. It's really my only course of action. Oh no, only course of action? I'm not sure about that. But extreme course of action, that sounds about right. I ask him why he's decided to do this all of a sudden. I'd rather honor their memory. Plus, it would make me happy. If I stayed in the business, I'd have to perform with someone else. I mean, I need to find a replacement for Clay's, and a replacement for Rocker, too. I don't think that's a good thing to do. I, I wouldn't want to give off the impression that they were expendable. They aren't. People move on in show business every day. I don't think that's something that I can do. A week from now, Sinju will have already uh, have a new set of idols and a new tour planned. But me? I just couldn't do that. That meant too much to me, you know? It made, it meant a lot to the world, too. So I think I'm going to step down. You think that's a good idea? Well, he here's the problem, is that we know he's gonna die! And so keeping him around, if you say do what makes you happy, you might have a chance to get away! So, do what makes you happy, man. And that, and if you, you shouldn't torture yourself to pursue your passion. If your passion is destroying yourself, maybe your passion is misplaced. If he doesn't want to do it, you should do what makes him happy. He smiles at me slightly. Okay, so that was also a good response. That's good. He smiles at me slightly. I was thinking about my next career choice, something like a philanthropist. Okay, that's good. I've only ever wanted the best for others, and I'd have I'd have the time and money for it. I make more than enough of my royalties. In fact, I could retire and do nothing, but that would seem like a waste. I wouldn't be making a difference at all. I feel like Clayson Rocker would be more than proud of me if I went out and, and caused and caused change. That's good. But then the question remains: what kind of change? 
guess I need to think on that. But I've already made up my mind. The more concrete details can come later. Actually, I think... He stops himself before he continues to speak. Sorry, I just got a little excited. I didn't mean to ramble on like that. No need to apologize. I have to say, this whole situation is odd. I expected Shock to be hostile and angry, or at the very least, hateful towards Akron. But to see him planning his future, is he trying to move on, or is he just... Is this just escapism? It's hard to tell when you're dealing with grief. He could be making an actual effort to move on, or he could be pushing it aside in denial. Um, I think I know what it is, though. It hasn't even been 24 hours since Clay's death. I don't think it's possible to move on that fast. Hey, you there? He waves at me, trying to get my attention. You must have zoned out. I wanted to talk to you about Akron. Oh, he does want to talk about Akron. Perhaps I spoke too early beforehand. He still must be mad about what happened. Let me get this out of the way first. This isn't because he overpowered me. I have some genuine concerns. I've just kept them quiet so far. Hope that I can trust you with this. I can trust you, right? I nod affirmingly, of course. Affirmatively. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about me betraying his trust. Whatever he told me will stay between us. Because I expected the same courtesy of him. He's a very suspicious man, you know? Some things just don't add up to me. The old security guard disappears, Clay dies, a new guard appears, Rocker dies, it's... Oh, it's too convenient! The killer also has to be somebody here. Rocker's death proved that fact. I don't know how you feel, but... It felt like he gave me a death threat. Back in front of Singe's office, I mean. He said that he'd let me die if I didn't stay on his good side, which is horrible! Well, it did ha... I don't know if it was a death threat, but he just... I mean... If you were in that position, I... Like, don't piss me off! I'm trying to help you! But the problem is we... Us as the player know more about him, but... Us as the character don't. I don't... Ow! Yeah, my thumb! <laughs> I'm sorry if it gets old, me complaining about my thumb. I'm trying to cut out all the moments. But it interrupts me when I'm talking sometimes, because it keeps throbbing. Throbbing! I don't think Akron is the killer. He's always been truthful, as far as I can tell. He keeps mentioning this perfect track record of his, too. Turns out it's not so perfect, but not because of Rocker's death. What? I was looking up his name online. There seems to be hints here and there that is of an operation he was part of in Africa, but he refuses to talk about it publicly. And anything that was that was promising has since taken off, been taken offline. He's hiding something. What would he want to hide, though? It would have to be something shameful, something that affects his reputation, or maybe it's something personal, I don't know. What else could that be but a failure? Turns out he's not as perfect as we thought. In fact, there's lots of stuff about him that just leads to long dead web pages. It takes power to do that en masse. Well, fuck! I find this all a little hard to believe. Yeah, he's a bodyguard! A reputation of a bodyguard isn't gonna be a fucking public one. And on web pages, who the fu who the fuck dedicates a web pages to someone that... I don't... I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to justify things because I know that he's not the killer. But at the same time, he's also letting them die, so it's like, he kind of is? I don't know. I'm just gonna try to play it from the mind of the, of the person who's there in that moment. But it's all a little hard to believe. Yeah, that's something from D&D that I've learned. Don't use meta-knowledge. So Akron is lying about his perfect track record? Or at the very least, he's hiding facts about his past. The latter is more acceptable, but the former makes me doubt almost everything. It, get, it goes deeper, trust me. I cross-reference the dates of Akron's time in Africa with other notable events. This is where things get interesting. Maxine Armstrong was also present. Of course, she said she was just visiting. And she doesn't didn't have any business there, but she must have been lying. That week, there were explosions. The details of that were also hard to find, but it was all in the same small village, same one that Akron was in as well. I'm not grasping at straws. They were there together, but now they're here together. In Africa, it ended in explosions, but it hasn't happened here yet. So right now, we're one step ahead. It's all too connected to mean nothing. 
especially everything about the village during everything about that village during the span of the time is also impossible to find. It's a small village in Africa. Also, she shows up. He at that he obviously right now has a problem with her. Could stem from the fact that she went there, got too involved, and fucking set off some of her weapons. Therefore, he doesn't like her now. And now that she's getting involved here, he's like residually upset. And so it doesn't mean anything about him. In fact, she could be taking down all the details about the small village in Africa because she fucked up. We don't know. It seems more fitting that a CEO would be the one taking down information on the web about her as opposed to some random ass bodyguard. Something bad happened in Africa, and now it's happening here as well. Maybe they're some sort of murdering duo? After that, he remains silent. I'm left trying to try to absorb what he just told me. It can't be a coincidence that they're both here, but why were the details in Africa so hard to find? I'm assuming the chalk is truthful, of course. I doubt he'd, uh, he's the type to make this up. But doesn't Akron hate Armstrong with a passion? He also had no idea that Maxine was involved here. Allegedly. Could be an act to throw us off his trail. We need to get Singe to evacuate now. The bottom line is we're not safe here. We need to leave Tokyo. I don't care where else we go. My mind flashes back to the earlier meeting with Singe. How we shouldn't make any rash movements. We don't want to provoke them into killing us, or I guess in this case, setting off the weapons. It's kind of stupid though. Akron might talk some sense into him. That is, unless he's involved in this mess. I'm not sure what to think. Well, maybe this is getting a little too far. But you get what I'm trying to say, right? We can't trust Akron to protect us. Nor can we trust Armstrong Incorporated. We need to ensure our own protection, not place it in others or in armaments. We may not have seen have seen eye to eye earlier, but this is just a matter of common sense. We all need to push Akron away. This conversation is optimal? I don't know what that means. We can't put our lives in his hands. Come on, you're with me, right? I'm not sure what to say, but he thinks Akron is hiding failures. I wouldn't believe it, but Rocker's already dead. Only after a few hours. So if I have proof of his failure right in front of me, so I have proof of his failure right in front of me. However, he's been acting up since the press conference. Perhaps Armstrong's involvement's infected his judgment? This case got personal for him very fast. But then there's that issue of Africa. Him and Max both in the same village with explosions? And now they're both here, with bombs too! It doesn't appear to me as pure coincidence. There is a difference between fucking Tokyo and fucking small village in Africa. Bombing there and bombing here, very different. And it's clear that Shock wants a response now. I don't blame him with how fast things have happened, but I need to think carefully. There's always a chance that he's just vindictive. Rocker did die under Akron's watch, and Akron did make Shock out to be very pretty weak. What do I tell him? Well, word has its way of spreading. So if I say that he can't be trusted, it's going to get back to Akron, and fuck, I don't want to get him on my bad side. It's but, but I don't... Ah! No meta knowledge! My character, as is right now, should know that Akron is there. F fine, he understands it. He has no reason to distrust Akron. He knows that Shock has a reason, so I still trust Akron to protect us is my final answer. So, I still trust Akron. Lock it in. He laughs at me and claps his hands at a, multi a, multi a couple times. After this, an awkward silence ensues. Wait, you weren't joking? Even after everything I've told you? I nod. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I, I, dis I deconstructed it right here. <laughs> this is his job, and all eyes are on him. Whatever happens will not, be, will not escape the media barrage. If he wants to maintain his good name, he won't slip up. I can't take the evidence from Shock as proof. It was all tangential, hardly concrete. I thought better of you. Oh, what? what? I didn't say you would lie. I won't lie, but mark my words, more people will die. I just feel it in my gut. You know, th that's something you don't want to say when we don't know who the killer is, and you, you, we, you, you're on the list of suspects too, buddy. I'm leaving. Tell him it probably would be better to stay. If he acts like that, he could scare the culprit. You think so? But what if Akron is the culprit? What are you going to do in that situation? This could be the final choice we make. Would you be content if you're wrong? Before I can even think of responding, my phone rings. 
feel as if my heart stops beating. Another text message? I hoped they would stop. It feels like I've woken up from a nightmare. I raise a finger, asking him to hold on. He stops talking, giving me time to check. We go through a brief period of hoping it's Singe, or Rook, or Keela, but this hope is short-lived. Go to the lobby, now. Things will begin shortly. And of course the fucking people got a mow right behind my fucking, right in front of my apartment, right now. I'm not sure what that could possibly mean. What was about to begin? Stop and think, last time I got a text they said a friend would die. I instantly put my phone back in my pocket, I storm out of the room without saying a word, but honestly, I wouldn't know what to say. I assume the, this person wants me alone, and so I leave shocked by himself and go to the lobby. In certain danger for my, both myself and my friends. Oh God! Why do you gotta mow right outside my apartment right now? They're not even mowing, they're just fucking blowing the grass clippings. Why? Why would you blow the grass clippings? Who gives a shit? A few moments earlier, nearing 7 p.m., Rook cautiously enters the conference room. He scans the area slowly, realizing he's alone. Why do I even bother being punctual? As usual, I'm the only one, I'm the one left waiting around. He sits down in a chair, taking a heavy sigh. Fiddling with his tablet, he tries to pass the time. Uh, oh, God damn it, no! Hello, Rook. He jumps in his chair, startled. You shouldn't pop up on people like that. Why would you want to scare somebody? You know what kind of situation we're in. Pop up on people? It's not like that. You were just so engrossed in your tablet you didn't notice me approaching. I can't be blamed for that. But do tell me, how is that tra tablet treating you today? Does he have anything interesting to say? Dots. What do you mean, he? Don't play stupid, Rook. I hate how everyone here is full of lies. How do you think everyone here would feel if I told them what's on that tablet? you They'd think you're some kind of freak. I mean, you are, but you've done a good job of hiding it. Why does everyone have something secret? I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. In a blink of an eye, Max seizes the tablet. Catching Rook off guard, he starts to fiddle with it. She starts to fiddle with it. Hey, give that back! He starts to panic, his breathing becoming erratic. That's mine! He leaps off his chair and tries to take it back. Max has no issues do dodging his attempts. She laughs mockingly as she browses the contents. You chat with him all day. She scrolls through the on-screen chat history. And almost all night, too. You shut the world out just for him. But why don't you seek something more real? Words on a screen can, hardly, can only do so much. It's affecting the way your friends see you, if that's something you'd even call them. As we all know, addictions can be costly. I've talked to people you work with. They mention your tablet more than you. Max, I'm asking nicely. She continues st scrolling. Wow, you can find a lot in this guy. He seems to be so full of knowledge, too. Let me try asking him something. She spends a few moments typing. Wow, he responded instantly, with such detail, faster than any living being could. Rook huffs angrily, easily ac accepting her bait. Let me ask him about Eclair, or perhaps I can ask about Jade. He must know all, all of your dirty little secrets. This is fucked. Max, I've had enough! He charges at her in a fit of rage. She instinctively crutch clutches her necklace. And suddenly, everything stops. Pretty quick to anger, isn't he? Oh well, I was gonna restrain him anyway. Pretty fun to see him all rustled, though. If that's his trigger, he must have all sorts of little nasty secrets. <laughs> she starts, uh, she stares at the tablet for a moment. Curiosity. Though well, I guess it really isn't any of my business. I was just having a little fun, none of this would be permanent anyway. She places a tap down on one of the chairs. And she pushes Rook down and onto the one beside it. As he is unaware, there are no signs of ob objection. Yeah, she froze time, I get it! The circumstances of Af Africa were definitely a little different. But I guess I have to make do with what we have and compromise. Akron will know what I'm up to. With Rook on the chair, she grabs some rope. How much rope do you have? You better get comfy. She ties him up to a chair, ensuring that it's extra tight. His wrists to the armrest and his feet to the legs. 
Mm, I suppose I'll be generous. She moves the tablet from the chair to his pocket. You're lucky you're just a means to an end. I was tempted to dump this in the water. But that's something you'll need to do on your own, Rook. I can't do it for you. She lets out a silent laugh. <laughs> the things that people do in grief. Doesn't anybody know handle things like normal living beings anymore? I don't get it at all. Oh well. Time for the finishing touch. She walks over to the other side of the room. The bomb she placed there earlier flashes a bright red. I hope this doesn't scare him too much. She spends a few moments disarming the weapon, and sure after ensuring that it's off, she returns to Rook. The red light on the explosive, now a docile green. Placing the bomb in his lap, she slowly rearms it. Oh god! <laughs> it lights, its light returns to red, flashing it on its new intent. And with that, the stage is set. She grips her gear-shaped necklace once more. Oh, you're finally conscious again! Rook looks around in confusion. He struggles slightly after realizing he's restrained. Hey, let me go! I can't do that. I have an important plan for you, Rook! She leans in close to give her words more emphasis. Let's get down to business. You've been wasting your life on that tablet in your own little fantasy, and you're defensive enough to attack me. But it's odd, you've passed out right after. Physical exertion was elude you, Rook. I had no choice to but, but to restrain you. This bomb, however, is another story. She points at Rook's lap, and he notices the bomb. He immediately starts to squirm and struggle. Hey, now don't struggle too much. You wouldn't want to set that thing off in error. Those words were enough to scare him into submission. He remains as stiff as a corpse, his eyes tearing up. Why are you doing this? I never did anything to you! Please let me go! Trust me, Rook, if I'm not going to hurt you, and you'll be free to go shortly. That is, if things go in your favor. I'm going to tell some of your friends that you're here, waiting to be saved, and they also know the disarming codes. It's pretty simple. They can come and save you if they want to. She takes a brief pause. Hmm. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but there's a chance they might not come. Because they may like someone more than you. And that is why your tablet is so imp this is why your tablet is so important. You've spent so long immersed in that silly little thing, ignoring those around you. Perhaps now they will ignore you. I'm a firm believer that we set our own bombs in life, and our errors and lapses in judgment set minds for us to step on later. We are victim to we are victim to our own actions and words. We can conveniently choose to blame others, but at the end of the day, it's our fault. You chose to bond with that tablet instead of those who were currently around you. And now, that choice of yours may haunt you. Perhaps if you weren't so obsessed with that thing, they would be rushing to save you. But now, the fact that they need to choose makes this all more interesting. You're sick! Blaming me, of course. Of course he's fucking blaming you! If you weren't such an introvert, you'd be relaxing right now in confidence. But now you've come to realize what you've been doing is harmful. But just how harmful? Well, that is up to the strength of the bonds you have made. They decide your fate. Oh, and if you even mention my name, I'll set off every single weapon here. So don't even try to play a hero, Rook. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go help contestant number two. This show is about to begin. This is fucked. This is really fucked. Yes, I'd like to save my game. Thank you all very much for watching this fucked up episode of... Um, I almost said extracurricular activities. Of Major Minor. On the next one, I imagine Keela's gonna wind up in a similar fate. And then I'll have to choose. Oh god, I really don't want to do it! But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained and professional speaking for the voices in my head when I say until next time... Fare thee well. Bye, everyone! <laughs>